八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八八这 piece right here is a mirror image of this other piece right here. However, it was a lot easier to clean up this one than this one because I increased the overhang angle. I have an overhang angle of 70% on this one and an overhang angle of 80% on this one. So it, this piece had a lot less supports, which made it a lot easier to clean up. So now I'm going to sand down all of these parts with 100 grit sandpaper before I glue them together. So I'm going to use the Dremel to clean up some of these more maltiform spots. So I have all these pieces sanded down and now I'm going to go ahead and try to glue them all together. So now I need to glue all of these pieces together and my idea is that I can draw perpendicular lines across this flooring tile here and then I can align the pieces based off of those two perpendicular lines so that I make sure all of the pieces are square against each other. Ideally, this guy sits right about there, and this guy sits right about here. That went together pretty well. Let's glue together the bottom plant. Whew! <laughs> the fumes from this shit are horrendous. Didn't cancer as we speak. Alright, how does it look? I'm gonna go through and friction weld all these seams. You friction weld by taking like a Dremel tool, putting a little bit of the filament in it, and then just running it along the seam. I actually had to install a smaller uh, collar in this uh, Dremel to hold the filament because the filament is 1.75 millimeters, which was too small for the existing collar in the Dremel. So I finished friction welding all of the seams on the helmet and now I'm gonna go through with this 3M Acro Green and fill in some of the uh, bigger chunks that I couldn't fill in with the uh, friction welding. Oh, and I've never used this before, but I saw it in another video. So I figured I'd give it a shot. So 
So I put that in some of the seams and it made a big mess, but it does seem to fill the cracks pretty well as I sand it down. So maybe I just need to get better at using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the XTC 3D to the print, hopefully to smooth out all the surfaces and give it a good finish. Um, I've never used it before, but uh, I read the instructions and it doesn't sound too difficult. So it's 12 hours later. This did not turn out as well as I was hoping. It still has really rough surface to it. Actually, probably rougher than before I applied the coating. Sanding it down kind of smoothed it, and now it has an abrasive feel to it. I think there's two reasons why that could have happened. One, either I didn't clean off the piece completely after sanding it, leaving a whole bunch of uh, you know dust and residue on it. Or two, I didn't follow the instructions for mixing the XTC 3D correctly. There's a part in the instructions that I missed where you're supposed to premix part B before using. Shake the container vigorously. I wish that I included that on this part B bottle, maybe in some big lettering, but uh, yeah, I missed that. So I will try applying a second coat. I think I'll use a light 220 grit sandpaper on this before to smooth it out a little bit, and then I'll apply the second coat. There are certain parts of the print that turned out really well. Where I had a thicker layer of the XTC 3D, it is really smooth. So that could be the all, another pro issue. It's just that I didn't apply it thick enough. And you know what? One sanding pass with the uh, 220 grit sandpaper is really smoothing that out. It's making a big difference. The finish is now pretty good with using that XTC 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some filler primer, paint the mask, and we'll see how it turns out. So I've added a couple of coats of the primer filler and sanded them down and this is what I'm left with. It's certainly not perfect, but thankfully Kylo Ren's mask has a lot of defects to it. I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint it black. I don't think there's a lot I could do now to fix it, so I'll just put up with whatever I get with this one and improve on future prints. So I put on two layers of black paint onto this helmet. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tape up around the front part here along certain lines so that I can spray the chrome accents on the front. I've got this very thin tape here. I believe it's a quarter of an inch in width that I'll use to uh, make the fine details. I've got it all taped up now, and I'm gonna go uh, spray the chrome on. So I got done adding a coat of silver type chromish to the helmet. Uh, let's see what our finished product looks like. So the silver paint turned out pretty well. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut out a piece of smoked acrylic to make kind of a eye shield here. In the movie, the mask has kind of like a mesh finish across the eyes, so this won't be completely screen accurate, but it'll probably be the quickest and easiest solution. <laughs> Sitting downstream of the Dremel is probably not the uh, smartest way to cut it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna heat this up and try to bend it to be the shape of the mask. I really need to get a heat gun because uh, my wife doesn't consider her, her hair dryer to be a power tool. That's not working at all. Let's go try something else. All right, so the idea with this setup is that the acrylic will start to become more malleable and it'll bend and hopefully bend around the 
pot. So that ended up working a lot better than I thought it would. They got the oven up to about 250 degrees and that just melted straight to the uh, mold I had set. I still need a tighter bend on this, so I guess I need to find a smaller pot. So what ended up working out in the end is I placed the piece of acrylic on a baking sheet, um, got it really warm and malleable in the oven, and then once it was to the point where it was kind of starting to sag, I then pressed it into the helmet to get the perfect shape. So this is the final result. So it's actually got multiple contours to it to fit really well in the helmet. Now I'm gonna glue the eye shield into the helmet. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. There were a lot of man hours that went into printing this and putting it together, but it's cool to say that I made it. In the future, I plan on taking what I learned making this helmet and using it to make an entire collection of Star Wars helmets. If you like this video, then you'll also enjoy some of my other videos. You can also subscribe down below to be notified about all of my future projects. I've got some cool things in the pipeline and plan on producing 20 videos in the next 52 weeks. Thanks for watching and take it easy.